This is the animal mortality management session for the afternoon. Our first speaker is Craig Williams. He's county agent for Penn um, State Extension. He's out of uh, Wellsboro, Pennsylvania. He'll be speaking on the Pen a Pennsylvania finishing barn experience, changing from mortality burial to a Michigan style compost barn. Welcome Craig. Thanks Sandy. Uh, I've got to pay 10 bucks now. <laughs> um, so what I want to do today is walk us through a unique experience of, of uh, an experience on a farm in uh, northern Pennsylvania. This is a hog barn. I'm the dairy crop guy and I've done a fair amount of composting. Um, I've done a fair amount of barn visits and discussions and then nothing ever came of that. And uh, we have an opportunity here where where uh, something was actually built. We were actually able to monitor it for two years. And um, I wanna walk you through that farmer experience um, of what, have ha what has happened. And uh, there's the Twitter and, and uh, contact information up there and uh, plug for the Penn State uh, Twitter contact that's up there. So, of course now it won't work. Must be because of the uh, recording. Let's try that. So what we want to do is this is a typical uh, finishing barn in Pennsylvania, in northern Pennsylvania. Some people call it a 2020. That's what I was told it's called. And the uh, producer contacted me and says, I want to change from a burial system right now where I have to drive too far away to a mortality composting system. I want to improve my system. We talked about a couple things, um, bins, static pile outside, burners. You know, we walk through that normal scenario of what your choices are. And an outreach of attending a meeting like this is an outreach of the Michigan Symposium where we viewed a barn, which we call the Michigan Pennsylvania style composting barn or I call it the Pennsylvania Michigan style composting barn and I said I know this barn maybe we ought to think about that that you had seen I had seen a couple years earlier on a tour much like a meeting like this so a plug for coming to meetings but in the end the final evaluation whether EPA or Equip pays for it or the farmer pays for it is is he using it and is he happy and in this case after about two years of monitoring this situation I said are you happy with this system and he said yep I'm happy with this system so in the end the farmer or the growers got to use the system put on the farm all right so that was maybe major our major decision okay so here's a barn this is kind of the setup typical barn pretend that's not there yet this is the finishing barn um, we, we arrive on the farm we do a look around we know that we're driving mortality right now from all the way down to a spot down here and burying them it's taken all day to get there you know it's not efficient um granted gary flory showed the shallow barrels burial system yesterday which is exactly kind of what we were doing but you know but not not the same but we need to do something up here and the farmer lives right here Okay, so just put those parameters in in this scope of what we want to do okay so this is the burial system we are doing before no carbon underneath you know um, obviously everybody knows it's closer to the groundwater you got to dig it out what do you do in January you know all the issues that go with that and he wanted to improve his system so we looked all the way around and we kind of looked at this spot outside of the barn right here close to the barn getting animals dead animals to the compost pile little excavation so this is some interesting numbers this is the farmers money 23,000 to put up a 24 by 40 Michigan barn 5,000 in excavation 18,000 in building and concrete I'll use that number later on how much he is owning every dead hog in the presentation okay but in this contract situation 
the farmer is responsible for the mortality in that contract with those hog systems. Smithfield, Tyson might be a little different. That's just the way it is in this guy. So he owns them if they're dead, okay? So we decided to put that building right, right there. This is kind of what it looks like. It's at the end of the barn. This is actually the view from the house. So we've got a mortality composting barn working very close to the house off the end of the barn, off the end of the hog barn. So, you know, there's a couple things here. We really, really want to make this work right. And it's basically a 24 by 40. It's a not a bin structure. It's an open flow with a single wall down the center. All right. And uh, we've had a little bit of issues where we just ran an electric fence here. But the important part here is we poured concrete far enough outside of the barn so that your skid steer is not falling off a curb. Very important skill because if you build a system and the guy's rocking off a curb, he's not going to use the bin structure, you know, effectively. The other thing we would do right now is we'd put another concrete pad or something here to store some of our material outside and let it pre-wet before we put it in. All right, but this is the barn. So this is the situation. The year ago we talked about, I saw a nice Michigan barn when I was touring Michigan. I think maybe this is what you ought to build. Go along, do the rest of my extension work for six months. I call up the farmer and he says, hey, I built that thing. When are you going to come see it? And I'm like, holy mackerel. He actually, somebody built something that we suggested. Let's go take a look at it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, why? what are we going to do now? It's there. It was beautiful. All right. So we start watching this thing. Wood chips, hogs coming out of the barn. Uh, in, in this barn, it's like a 16, 20 week turn. We'll talk about that on, on loading rates. But this is a very free flowing. He can build piles here and work them this way. He can work a pile that way. He can move it back three foot barn here, our three foot wall here, four foot on the end. What's the number one rule we want with compost? We want it light and fluffy. We want air to be able to get to the pile and get through it, make some heat, come out the top. Some bin structures, there's nothing wrong with bin structures, but we put a wall all the way around. Don't let any air in. All right. You know, those are some of the issues with bins. You're also confined to that bin. Is it full? Then you got to go to another bin. So we have a lot of flexibility here. The other, the other thing I like about this, and I'll, I'll show you in a second, is we can actually reach to the back of this pile from this skid steer with some forks and fluff everything. Okay, we can reach all the way back. So then we started saying, okay, now the now the job's on me. I got to know what we're putting into this pile. So this grower has a very simple but accurate tablet system where every week it tells us how many hogs are going into the pile. We have a no value here, which was something I learned into this industry. When that barn is loaded, there's a set of hogs that are dead or no value or have a problem already. So we end up with 11, 10, 17, 16, whatever the no value is on first week loading. Now, there should be some debate on whether they should have stayed where they came from. All right, you know, but the point is he's responsible for no value on week one. So you, have, you jump immediately from 11 to one, four, 10, four, zero, four, whatever. All right, what's also happening to those hogs every week? They're getting bigger. All right, so now we're going to be loading a pile with more nitrogen and more flesh as we go. So the opportunity was there for two years of monitoring and records of what's going to happen. From July 14th to February 17th, we ran six groups of pigs or turns through the barn. Each barn turn was four and a half, four to five weeks or five months along and July 14th to uh, April 16th 
April 16 was mostly a wood chip type pile. Two loads of wood chips, the piles went back and forth and were stirred, and in April that load was completely land spread. And then we started with more of a sawdust type pile, which has actually run a little hotter. All right, so we had more of a wood chip base, now we have a sawdust base. If nobody's noticed, this is the farmer here taking some records. He looks very familiar in this room right now. So we labeled them groups, one, two, three. This is the dates when they were in there. The barn was loaded with 9,600, 2,000, 2,000. This is a number ahead, came in the barn. There were 80 deads from this time frame, or about 4.5% mortality. 103 dead, 66 dead, 86 dead. Don't look at this number, but there were 19 weeks, 18 weeks, 18 weeks. All right, this is, we were recording this by day when we did it back here. Then we switched to a week system. But the animals started at 56, 58 pounds. They were leaving the barn at 273, 265 pounds. So we had at least 80 to 100 animals to deal with every turn. We know that, you know, and that's what was happening. We averaged 84 head to deal with loading the barn on every turn in four to five months. Now remember, I'm a pig, I'm a dairy guy and I do a little bit of economy work. So we're gonna get into the real quick economics here. So for each pig, each week of pig mortality, we averaged this across all two years because I had to struggle with how do I load this barn? How do I know what's going to load this barn? So every week here is two years of data, okay? And then this is the average. So I averaged 17 no values in the first week for two years. And then the next week I averaged one, two animals, six animals, eight animals. And I called up some of my pig guys because I needed a little help. How do I decide the running number of weight going into that barn? You know, and so we decided let's make every rate of gain 11 and a half pounds a week. You can make it whatever you want, but we thought that was about estimate. And it came right out to 261 pounds at the end of the turn. So we're pretty much on, on board. We are averaging 605 pounds a week on two years data going into the barn every week. Whether it's 17 no values or two finishers at the end of the season, three finishers at the end of the season. We are averaging about 605 pounds are deads coming out of the barn that the owner's got to take care of and the compost barn's got to eat up in carbon. All right? That's what your carbon's got to use. So we did a little bit of here, $23,000 for a barn amortized over seven years is 3,000 and something dollars, divided by 250 pigs, because we averaged 249 in 16. In three turns, 249 pigs were composted in, in, in uh, 2016. The owner has $13 value invested in every dead pig. to compost them up, all right? It's just, an inher it's just an internal cost that he has already spent on investing in every pig to compost it up. Didn't say that that should be Smithfield's value or payment, or didn't say that should be Hatfield's payment in our area, you know, or Tyson's payment, but somebody has invested in that dead animal. So this is what it looks like on a graph, the blue line is the actual numbers that you just looked at, 17 no values, all right? But those 17 weighed 850 pounds, first time right into the pile, all right? And then as we went through, you could see what the amount of weight going into the pile, because it doesn't really matter if there's six or five, we're composting the amount of weight. And then the red line is just there getting bigger as we go, all right? So it's just an interesting thing that we want a compost pile to eat up 605 pounds 
on that pictured barn every week. That's what's going to happen. Now, this we could reduce the amount of animals. This is an antibiotic-free type system, you know, so whether or not that's going to change the numbers. But there's going to be animals coming out of that barn. All right? So we've got good temperatures, 130. We might have been running a little dry. This was some wood chips with some straw. The point was it was still working. Even though it was dry, it was under root. Sometimes we'd take the manure tank, rinse it out, blow that on the pile. We'd get good heats come up, all right? But in this case, the farmer was still happy with the system and it was a little dry. We did not have leachate coming out of the bottom. He could use his skid steer, flip it over here, move the pile back and forth. We could put forks on there, reach straight in and lift it up. So it was very flexible, all right? This is a little bit of the monitoring that we did. Um, could we have gotten away with one post and not had two? Maybe, might have given us a little bit more flexibility. Um, you know, but you know, the guy that hasn't hit the post really yet. You can see we have some moisture back in here, but we did never had a lot of leachate coming out this way. So I, all in all, from my experience, I'd say it's working. We got good, good heats on bones. Bones would break apart. We'd hit our 130 degrees. Sawdust is a little hotter. There's a little bit of work on how much sawdust or yards of uh, wood chips did we buy. Um, I have not balanced out if we were proper on our wood chip or carbon to nitrogen ratio as long as I was knowing that the farmer was happy with the system working and it would always have good heat. So we might have been a little tight on the amount of sawdust we bought. But you know, at the same time, you know, we were still getting good composition, good com composting going on. All right. So with that, and how many minutes do I have? Five minutes. Um, I'd open it up for two or three questions, and if anybody really has a hard question, I'll turn it over to Gary sitting over here in the corner, who's actually the owner of this farm. All right, and uh, we. Uh, we're very excited he could come down for vacation from Pens northern Pennsylvania, take in the composting, or uh, take in this workshop and see the presentation. So, a couple questions, and, and this is a, a more of a talk of you have a great opportunity to monitor something, capture some data, but the farmer's working the system and likes it, and it's working for him. So, Mark. No, no. And my justification was it was the barn invested for seven years in the concrete. The sawdust went in and I got it back on the field. I mean, you can run the economics however you want to, but in this case, I figured the, the hogs went in there, you bought sawdust, and that went back onto the field. In this case, we've only cleaned it once. It's gone on to like a deer plot. You know, we had some green up, you know, which we would expect. Maybe we didn't get the economic value back as a cornfield, but I didn't put any of the sawdust cost in that $13. Can I follow up real quick yeah. So is there, he's a certain size farm. Does that same barn have room for a bigger capacity, more hogs, so that cost would actually come down? Would you say we were sized right, or would you have more room? I would, I would say we could, from my experience, we could use a little more sawdust, a little more carbon, but we had open space in either side of our panel at all times I showed up. And he would often start a group here and work it, and then he would start a second group in another part and work it the other way. So. Whenever you uh, turn the piles, did you normally just take it over the wall, or did you move it to, next to it? Jason, I've got a golf play. Which way do you work? Uh, what's uh, best? It would really work good more over the wall it, because that would that would aerate the whole pile, mm -hmm. and then then you would get a really heat up, and the heat would come up. Uh, another question is with the roof. Do you have a ridge bed on top? No, no. Did you have any uh, problems with uh, moisture up above? No, not at all. Because there's so much air pulled through. Okay. 
we would say it's, been, it's a little dry. You know, there's sometimes it's... Oh, yes. How many feet away is the barn from the exhaust fans? And the second question is, does the barn have any impact on the exhaust fan? Um, in that spot, it's probably about 60 feet. 60 feet. Yeah. I don't think so. And, and it's pretty windy in that spot, too. Are you put any of your sawdust outside now? Just to I store can store it. I can store it in the roof. Last fall, I had a mile outside. I put it in before winter because it was really wet. Store have you run a hose out there or anything? I haven't, and I thought about it, but I haven't had to do that yet. Yes. Are you are using any other type of nitrogen source other than just the carcasses? No. Just all. No, just the I pigs. Okay, thank you. Let's give Gary a round of applause. <laughs>